bingo. I don't even know where you begin to eat it. That is a big meal. Belize is a remote country on the Caribbean coast of Central America. Once part of the ancient Mayan Empire, it has one of the lowest population densities of anywhere in the world. The jungles of Belize boast over 5,000 species of plants and hundreds of different animals. Crocodiles, jaguars and eight types of poison snakes. I'm 150 foot up with nothing but hard rock below. Pretty high up here, probably about 2,000 foot. And the real heart of the jungle is down there. And probably my best way of getting down into that is just to stick with this water course. At this time of year, it rains most days. The river is a raging torrent. Worse still, in these soaking wet conditions, the ground has turned to mud and rocks into an ice rink. We've got to go much, much slower on this stuff. Fall into this, you're not going to come out of it. The pounding white water is full of huge boulders. These rivers are killers. But also, look, trying to work my way around those rocks, it's just not going to happen. In some ways, this is almost jumpable. The thing is, that rock is going to be slippy. I plan to bridge the gap with this log. I've got to choose my spot carefully. If the log slides on the greasy rock, I'll be straight in that white water. OK, look, it's good and secure that side, wedged in there against that. But this side is a bit precarious, look. Four inches of wood is all that separates me from the raging torrent. Really, I need to try and keep my feet out of the water. It's the amount of white water coming down here. If my feet go in, it's going to take me. The force of this water would spin me off the log and down that waterfall. OK, it's me across. Let's get you. Now to get the crew across. OK, just really take your time on this. It's often these short crossings on slippy old logs that are the most dangerous ones. Nice. Well done, man. Try and see if I work my way round down this ledge. This is a tight spot, but it's the quickest way down to the jungle floor. There's no turning back. Moss and lichen grow all around the waterfalls, making the rocks slimy and slippery underfoot. Button. You know, you can get behind the waterfall here. With thousands of gallons of water thundering overhead, this is no place to hang around. The forest floor is now tantalizingly close. The next big challenge is the jungle. Down here, the vegetation is denser and it's hard going. Always be on the lookout for alternative routes and keep your options open. And these jungles and Belize have something like eight different types of potentially lethal snakes, including the fair de lance, grow up to eight foot long, and they're particularly aggressive snakes. Check this tree out. Yeah, this is a bullhorn acacia. And look, it not only has all of these spikes on it, but it also, I don't know if you can see, has all of these ants that live inside of the spikes. And if you mess with the tree, all of these ants will come out to try and protect it, and they'll start biting you. 
The ants are a strong deterrent, but they're not going to stop me getting to the bark. What the bark has is some properties in it that is going to slow your heart rate. <laughs> and these ants do bite. But if you get bitten by a snake, it's going to slow the speed that the venom goes around your body. Let's take a couple more strips of this, just in case I come a cropper with a snake. Jungle remedies can be useful, but it's best to avoid getting bitten in the first place. So be on the lookout. Come in, come close. Nice, steady, nice and steady. We've got a serious, proper sized snake here. And that is a big boa constrictor. He's not like me being this close. And this guy is gonna feed off small mammals. Rats, rodents, monkeys, and he is a formidable predator. Constrictor, if he gets round you, he's gonna try and wrap around and just squeeze the life out of what he's after. I'm going to avoid the head and try to get hold of it by the tail. There we go. Well, they always say, the snakes don't brush their teeth, teeth. And you can not only smell it from here, but if it got hold of you, even if the bite didn't kill you, it's gonna get infected. And that's how you end up in a lot of trouble. But there's a lot of meat on this snake. I'm gonna take the risk. The only way you can really be certain is just to go through that spinal column. <clears throat> and that is a good length of snake. And it's gonna be good dinner. But man, my heart is thumping. I wanna gut the snake immediately to prevent any of the meat becoming infected. And then once you're through it all, you can then Start taking the guts out. The snake's guts contain half digested food, feces, and parasites. And in a big boa constrictor, there is a lot of guts. The boa's digestive system can make up a third of its body weight, and that's weight I don't want to be carrying. Okay, let's get moving. where you don't want to bump into his big brother. It's four o'clock, I've got two hours daylight left. It's time to call it a day and set up camp. Actually, this wouldn't be a bad place just to set up camp. And it's so important to leave yourself enough time when you're in the jungle. Once that light goes, it gets dark so fast. You do not want to be here with no shelter when it's night time. And look, I've got some good upright trees here and the most important thing is to make sure you build your shelter up off the jungle floor and you know, this is where all the life of the jungle is with ants snakes you name it so I can build a bit of a, a platform here light but strong these kahuna palms make a great frame for the shelter and then just clear all of these leaves off it and that's gonna be about the right height for the bed platform, and then just use this moho bark. There's no time to lose, so I'm using more moho bark to weave my bed. I want to make sure the weave of this is close together, so your weight doesn't rip this thing, which is not what you want. My bed is strong, now to make it comfortable by splitting these palm leaves for bedding. It's also actually called thatching palm, and the reason is, it works perfectly as thatching for a shelter. It's what the Mayans would have traditionally used to thatch their, uh, their buildings with. Just check this works all right. And yeah, that's pretty good. Let's finish off the thatching and then get a fire going. Oh, this dead inner stem from the cahoon palm should take a spark. Everything's damp here, so this fire requires special attention. 
and it's finally working. Let's get this snake cooked up. I'm going to roast the boa meat skewered on green sticks so they don't burn. It's been cooking for 35 minutes. The flesh has turned white. It's ready to eat. And actually, when you get down to the skeleton, it's actually quite bony. It's a bit like jungle, jungle spare ribs. As darkness falls, the forest takes on a new face. Now the predators become active. That's not just the snakes you need to worry about out here. Uh, one of the big dangers actually is vampire bats. And they can suck your blood from you as you sleep uh, without you even knowing about it. And the bit they're most likely to go for is just the tips of your fingers. Right away from the tent. Rattlesnake bite. The snakes. And that's why it's important that I'm well prepared for it. Distinct rattle sound. 